Greetings, guys. So, um, I'm Fancy, and for those who don't know, I am the owner and editor in chief of, Swag <clears throat> Excuse me, of Swagger Magazine. And today, I am bringing you a new CEO chatter segment. Um, CEO chatter is my, it stems from my business blog on my website at swagger.net. Um, I ask that you all check us out if you haven't already. But what we this what I decided to do was start interviewing a lot of the different CEOs as well. So this is kind of um, a continuation from the blog, whereas we discuss business, but we also kind of discuss where business and life intersect. So thank you all for tuning in. I'm waiting on our guest to come in. She still has like another minute or so, but I just kind of want to come on early, um, greet you all and just, you know, give people a minute to get on. But today's guest is Miss Laquita Brooks, um, who is from, or well, I want to say she's from New Orleans, but she may be from a surrounding area near New Orleans. I'm actually based in Baton Rouge, so it's really cool to be able to connect to someone that is, you know, a little bit more central to my location. Um, usually, it seems like the guests are always so far, but... <laughs> So, also, guys, um, in the meantime, while waiting on her to come on, I'm always looking for new stories, um, news stories in particular, for our newsletter, The Higher South. So, The Higher South is an independent Facebook journalism project that we're doing, and basically, um, it covers the southern states, and um, the news can range from interviews to actual news stories. So if you're if you have anything, then feel free to email me at the higher south at swagger dot net, or you can always just reach us at info at swagger dot net. Um, thank you. Is that Sir King sixteen? Hi there, Fly Girl Chick. No, Fly Girl CJ. I'm just dropping my email here. Um, in case you all have any news stories to send us, and you can put attention fancy there. And I'm waiting on our guests to come on, but for those who are tuning in, this is an episode of CEO Chatter, um, where CEO Chatter is where business and life intersect. So I discuss business and life with other CEOs. Um, usually, we discuss, you know, something, it's different topics, but today's topic is actually going to be how to prepare your business for tra travesties. Um, of course, today's guest is Ms. Laquita Brooks from, I want to say from New Orleans, but she is in Louisiana. And so as you all know, um, Hurricane Ida hit us pretty hard here in Louisiana. So um, New Orleans is still not I know they're up, but you know they're they still have a lot going on. They still have a lot of rebuilding, I think, to do. So um, I'm not certain if everyone has power there or not. But yeah, I did just see that someone I think in Baton Rouge um, may not have power for another month. They say so. It's still kind of crazy down here um, in the southern parts. But how are you all doing this morning? While we're waiting on her to join in. Y'all can drop it in the comments. Let me know where you all are from. I love to know that. Um, that's always really helpful for us to know where you all are from, just so we can kind of see like how far our reach is. You know, what cities and states are we touching? So drop it in the comments. Let me know where you're from. And um, greetings, Mr. Heated. Greetings, uh, is that Low Academy? Okay, okay, Laquita, I see you on. So I'm gonna go ahead on and bring you in. Just a second. Thank you for that, um, Fly Girl CJ. I'm actually thinking of visiting Maryland soon. Okay. I thought I said it. Okay. <laughs> Greetings. Hey. Hello How are there. You? I'm great. How are you today on this Thursday? Can you believe it's Thursday already? I can't. I know. It's like this week has just been flying by. I have got to keep my calendar open on my desktop or I don't know what's going on. You, are you not by, you're not by yourself. Same thing. <laughs> well, um, I always like to, I, I guess, to say, like to tell who they are. I think that you can do that best. So, Laquita, um, how would you describe your swagger? And also tell our guests a little bit about who you are. 
Well, first of all, I want to thank you for having me on. I so appreciate being able to share anything that I can. Um, first and foremost, I'm Lakita Brooks. I'm the motivational maven. And I, I was a, um, one who was a single mom and um, always was a businesswoman. I was selling candy and Rice Krispies treats and all that when I was in high school. And then I started doing hair for $10, $10-$15 I was doing hair in my mom's kitchen. Um, um, and so um, I've always had that business mindset to to want to strive and uh, build businesses. I've always loved being transformational because I love being able to do people's hair and seeing them, making them feel good and seeing them sit up in a chair and look different, feel different, get their lipstick out and change. I loved all of that. And so from doing that, I went into being a, a open to stores, to uh beauty salons and then I wanted to be good into real estate I had a client who had a sister who was a realtor who helped me and my husband find the house later I got married and so um, after that then you know I was intrigued about it and wanted to get into real estate I used to see on TV a lot was was you know they would talk back then it was a lot of talk about the two things to become a millionaire the two things to make money and that was real estate and stocks and so I was intrigued about wanting to get into real estate and wanting to not just be a realtor, but also an investor. So I went into being an investor and flipping houses and getting in properties that, you know, I leasing out some properties and things like that. And so I, um, I'm, I just love transformating. The, those parts have that transformational part in them. You know, it was transformating clients and the hair as hairstylist, transformating mm -hmm. homes when I flip them because I love seeing the bare bones and then seeing what I could do with it. And now I love as a motivational speaker and coach is helping transforming people's lives and helping them in any way. If there was their business and they need to get it up and running, if it was personal and they just was stuck and they needed to get unstuck in any way in their lives because we have been through all types of issues, whether it was parenting, whether it was wanting to make a shift in your business, whether it was worrying about what people say, where it was, whether it's going through trying to undo what has been done to us when we were a child. I love transforming people. And so I just knew I was going to be, I'm just transformational in any way. So building businesses is what I love to do because seeing, starting from nothing and then making it into this whole beautiful thing, whatever that may be and look like, because I don't always know the total end vision all the time. I have an idea, but I just love the journey and going away. Even if I'm stressed, even if I'm crazy, you know, loop and loop and I'm feeling like I don't know, I, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Yeah, I feel you on that. And um, I heard you say that you used to sell candy, that you used to sell candy and stuff in school. I did the same thing. I was a candy yeah. lady, so. I said, you know, oh, I wow. the hustles work because it seems like everybody always, well, not everyone, but oftentimes I noticed that a lot of us did do that initially. That was like our first start right there with the candy. Hustle. Really? Oh, well, that <laughs> means we were on the same point. I don't, I never even got it from anybody. I just knew that's what I wanted to do. And I needed my extra change because I like my little extra cute things. And so I was like, okay, so let's do it. And we love, look, as, look, the kids love junk food. So, hey, you do what works. Right. So um, now, are you from are you from New Orleans or a little outside of New Orleans? I am from the outskirts of New Orleans, right where the airport is, Kennedy City, yay, KC. So, <laughs> but we say I say New Orleans all the time because people can relate to it. So, how has your business, like, um, you know, fared throughout Hurricane Ida? Well, the uh, so we have a logistics business. My husband and I have a couple of businesses with um, that are contracted through a larger corporation, and so we um, that business did have a standstill. And so with that shift was just making sure our employees were okay and just um, seeing how we could help them anyway, and so they can hold on until we open up again. And um, as far as the real estate business, I did have some damage to a few of the properties. One is a total teardown. And so um, we, we, we just held on and we just, you know, tried to keep, keep motivated and keep, just keep optimistic that this was temporary and getting out of that situation was just sitting down and just itemizing what is it that we need to do to make sure everything is okay and emotionally that our employees were okay too. Right. And I'm sorry to hear about the, the, the house that you said that's going to be a teardown um, as well as, you know, just what, whatever else you have going on. I'm glad that you all didn't just 
totally, you know, have a total loss. But the teardown does kind of sound like a loss. I, I guess that would be. Yeah, it's more like if you have your baby and then you're starting to like, you know, do some things with the baby. The baby's born and then you're trying to, you know, we had started gutting out. I just thank God that we at this property, we didn't have any tenants in it. It was a newly purchased one. I was getting ready to start fixing it up. And then the, the hurricane happened. Um, what I'm fortunate of is just making sure, you know, I had insurance on it. So I just said, long as no, there was no one hurt, I was, I was okay. Truly, I was. Yeah. So from your experience as, um, you know, just recent experiences as well as just your knowledge over the years of being in business, what are some ways that business owners can prepare for travesties in their business? Because I know, like, especially natural disasters, as we're starting to have them more often, it's so unexpected. You know, oftentimes there might be something that we could have done, but we missed out on that opportunity. So what, what could we do? I think that what, one thing we need to make sure, if you, if you have a business that's up and running and it's okay and it does involve employees, you want to make sure you have that damage control because of through your, and making sure your employees are okay. You're showing them that you have a concern and you, you care about their, you know, their welfare. So checking on your, your employees and then checking on your customers is important. Ensuring them that you care and what you could do and give back in any kind of way. What was unfortunate in these businesses that I saw many businesses that had to just, you know, they were, um, they came, they didn't do anything for the customers. They didn't show that they care. And I did see that reflect on social media where people were naming different places and saying, and they were kind of like, you know, you got that bad mouth that they didn't do anything for them or they didn't, they didn't even reach out to them anyway. So caring for your, what, what really helped to sustain you before the, before any travesty is important to you to think about during or after the travesty happens, showing concern for them. Um, another thing is making sure that you have reserves in your business. If you, whatever it takes that you are maintaining your business, any whatever bills, whatever employment and, and, and payrolls that you are paying, everything that is outgoing and incoming, you want to make sure you know your numbers. And whatever, you need to have those in reserve at least up to three to six months. So if something were to happen, you are at least can sustain it, even if you don't know how to pivot and shift in it, you have something to sustain it, and then you're able to help your employees financially or in any way to help them stay on, especially if they're good employees and they're valuable to you. Right. Okay. And so then making sure and making sure you know how to pivot. If something happens in your business and you have, let's say you have a restaurant and I saw that in COVID that they had to make the shift and pivot from it. You no longer could do in-house dining and you had to do takeout only. Right. So right. they had to shift that. But what happens is that your marketing should shift along with your pivot. So if you have to pivot and do only, you know, put takeout dinners, takeouts only, or and now you didn't have a delivery service, you might want to consider a delivery service. And all of your marking should reflect what your pivot should be. So you, right. you're sending out to your past clientele. You're sending out to anyone that, you know, is in the area that you, this is what you're doing now. And that, you know, and discounts are that can, that the discounts don't be be open to giving discounts is if necessary, um, and then having bonuses for the employees because even with COVID that was such a thing that we no one was aware of what all would take take place in that. So now that you know that you 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 see what have happened, now you can prepare what might happen in the future. So make sure you take heed to what has happened, and then you, if you, you you if this you realize that you know you might have lost something in your business, now you know what not to do. Or now you know what you should be doing. And making sure that you all have the proper insurance, guys. Um, I've seen quite a few businesses who have posted during the Ida after Ida that they unfortunately now have decided to close. Um, and that was because they didn't know how to pivot. And they didn't they didn't understand the reserves, how much money they need to have on the side. And they didn't make sure that they had their marketing in place to be able to do the shift if needed. Uh, there were a few businesses I saw that they could have made. I felt like, well, no, I don't think that that was necessary for you to do. But it was just maybe because they did not they did not set up the reserves to be able to maintain the business. And in, in when, when these travesties do come. Right. So you said they need to have the reserves, they need to have the proper insurance, 
Um, but most importantly, I think the first one that you said was actually that they need to um, have a plan in place or a strategy to check on their employees and yeah. their Showing care and concern. Um, the ones who I did see that did understand that your your clientele, your customers, and your employees matter. They were out there. They were as soon as they got a generator, they were fixing food. They were giving out food for free for the first week if they were able to, and they were giving back to the community and showing that they were caring about it. They were checking on their employees and just seeing if there's anything that they can do for them in in this time of need to their ability. And that meant that if you had the reserves in place, then you're there to help them if you needed, if you could, if they were valuable customers. So number. Number one is caring for the community, staff, and customers, right? Number two is making sure you have reserves, all right? Number three is making sure you have the proper insurance because the damages that I saw, like I said, those businesses were closed even because, either because the reserves, they didn't have enough to sustain it or they had damage to it where they, they just was like, I just don't want it. Even though SBA loans were out here, you know, when they have, they have, when they have any type of, um, uh, hurricane, fire, you know, any type of acts of nature, SBA, you know, is there and able to be able to help you in a way. But they were just exhausted and really was out. And so understanding if you have your insurance, that can help, that can, that helps out a whole lot. Right. Um, and knowing how to pivot, knowing how to pivot, pivot in your business if need be, knowing how to think, be strategic and think out of the box. What is it going to take? How do I get to my market to let them know I'm still here and I'm caring, I'm concerned? If it's a business that uh, includes is includes any type of product, can I shift it to online? Can I shift it to be able to now be online and talking to my clientele? Can I email them? Do I have an email list? That's important, making sure every business should have an email list or a some type of CRM to hold these emails and be able to send out a blast when needed to let them know, hey, we're still here. How are you? Are you okay? You know, we're here. We're giving out this week. That type of thing is important. Yeah, okay. I, I agree with all of that. It definitely, and um, just having an email list, oftentimes people don't understand how important it is, but especially when they oftentimes, um, I mean, I notice a lot of people solely rely on social media, but even social media has its glitches at times. So, you know, when you have your email, you can at least reach out that other way. You have something that you more so can have more control over. So I get mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So, um, it's, uh, those were some really great tips. Um, I think that, you know, and then you also recap them. So, and there were only well, four. So, but that was really good. And you mentioned pivoting. That's what you were just discussing. But I wanted to know, like, was there a time that you had to pivot yourself in business? Um, I pivoted when I was maybe, you know, I thought about when I was doing hair, I, I was a hairstylist for over 20 years. And I knew that I wanted to help people in another way and go into coaching. I wasn't sure about coaching and, you know, just motivating and speaking. Um, speaking, I'm actually kind of fearful when I go on the stage, which everybody does. Is, yeah, I've heard that from many, even um, Steve Harvey, a lot of the people who go on stage, actresses, that they're, they're just, it's the same. There's no different, even though how big they go. But it's a, it was such a fear of mine. I wanted to I wanted to make sure that I did, didn't get in my way when I wanted to speak. Um, and that never left. I still had it. But when I knew it was time, I really didn't pivot on my own. Um, and as time was doing hair and every time I would do hair, when it came to that point and I knew that season was up, I was, I was like, I know there's more and, and the more was coming to me, but I wasn't making the change. And it wasn't until I had my salon was being, you know, the, the owner of it was getting ready to sell it. And so I was like, I had to go and I was kind of kicked out. It was kind of like God said, it's time. And if you don't want to go, I'm going to make you go. And so I made that pivot and shift and said, okay, now I'm ready. I'm going to do it. Knees knocking. No matter what, I'm going to do it. And so sitting down and writing down those four points to make sure I understood what I needed to do to open that part of the business was important. Um, and so learning how to shift and go into these new things, understanding, put the foundation in first. Um, and so, and making sure that you all have these businesses and this and travel to go back to the travesty one more time, you all have these businesses and understanding now that you've seen these things happen, 
guys, let's let's build more than one stream of income in a different in a different zone. Do go do it in something else too. Not just stay under the umbrella. If it's the umbrella of hair and you're still in the umbrella and you're doing it, that's all good. You might have you you know you might be doing giving services. Then you have products. You know you might have anything you know shirts anything in that in, underneath that umbrella. But try to shift into something else because if you put it all in, under that one umbrella and and that. And that umbrella crashes, and it comes something comes tumbling down. Now you have a problem, and everything underneath underneath that can be affected. So build other streams of income in and in other facets, other businesses, other type of genres. Okay, and so um, learning to do that, going back to being the pivot into to going into being a speaker is. Um, the one thing that I, I did, and I don't regret it. Like I said, it all has the component of being transformational. And so I love helping people in that way. Wow. And so, um, I'm sorry, my question escaped me just as soon as I opened my mouth. But <laughs> I, I was okay. going to ask, how do, you, how, do you balance, uh, how do you balance business and, and personal and your life, you know, especially with you having more than one business? You know, I, the verdict is still out on that. And I don't ever want to say that. I, I don't necessarily think it's, it's balanced. It's harmonized. Because That's I love the, I say. You know, I love the right. You know, I love the grind. I love of getting it, doing it all. And then I, then I may, tomorrow, you know, I may think of a whole new idea and say, oh, I want to try that. I want to do that. Because like I said, you know, I told you earlier, I love just building things. And so um, I just get it in where I can fit it in. Um, we've had, I, I had an assistant, but her house was flooded. And now, you know, it can be, a, it's been a little bit crazier than usual because I'm doing a lot more because it's been challenging trying to find an assistant because most people have been affected by the storm. And so um, I'm, I'm learning to shift again. Now I'm learning and I'm realizing and delegating more to house, to family members, <laughs> to friends. Look, can you do this for me? Um, you know, my daughter, we sh we're shifting, bringing kids to school in the morning so I can go in another direction afterwards. It's all of those things. It's crazy, guys, behind the scenes at times. And at times you do feel like you, you know, like, oh my gosh, am I, why am I really, why am I really doing this? But at the end of the day, you realize what, what, what pushes you, what drives you, what ignites you, what makes you want to do it. And you, and I get up and I do it all over again. So I don't really have a method. I don't have a, I don't, can't have a step. I do get up and meditate and pray. I try to listen to some gospel music. I try to just stay, get in a zone where I'm okay. I'm being centered and being ready for the, the day. Um, and then by the noon, it's like, okay, I'm all over the place. Just I got to go here. I got to do this. Let me make this call. Let me do that. And so it's okay. And I just realized that it's temporary until things get on track again. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because um, I know, well, we weren't impacted too badly here. Well, I'm in Baton Rouge, but I wasn't impacted as as badly as a lot of people were but just that that first seems like actually the week after um the hurricane it was just still kind of crazy for me you know just even trying to remember well i just said earlier i'm still trying to remember what day it is so, mm -hmm. so it's like i'm still uh trying to catch up it seems like we lost some time somewhere in, in some type of way well i guess we did especially those of us we who did. Have power for some time so that was a that was a loss of time right there it we did and it was kind of it's still kind of crazy we just got our lights on last week and then um we still don't have cable and don't have internet so literally i'm rushing out trying to go somewhere and our office my 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 my, my personal office um because right now i'm at my ladder and bloom brokerage office but my personal office is is it's had a lot of damage and it still don't have lights and so we didn't have anything. So I was, I'm kind of like, I'm trying to like, I'm kind of like makeshifting, making my way around, trying to get set up. And so that, that's nothing. Like I said, knowing how to shift is important. You go, you go with the punches when things happen, you know how to make it work. You know how to make it happen. And they're truly a business person. When you are in business, guys know how to fi figure out ways to, to, to make it work, be strategic and think out of the box. Right. Now, is there anything else you'd like to share before we close out? No, I just, I really am like a motivator in the end. If I can say whatever it is that you want to do, then stop waiting and do it now. And if COVID did not change you, I don't know what will. You know, I had COVID right out the bat. 
in the beginning. Um, in February, that was 2019. Was that 2019? Well, 2020. Lord have mercy. 2020. And so I had it right out the bat. And I, I mean, literally, I still have residuals from it every now and then. I'm not all the way like 100%, but I thank God I, you know, I made it through. And so um, I think that we have to, if you all want to go for your goals, you need to stop waiting and do it now. It can happen. Just sit down and understand the things that you have to go ahead and sacrifice. What, you, what is it that you want to sacrifice? What are the things that, you, that no longer serve you? What are the things that are not helping you towards your goal? Who are those people who are not helping you? And so dissect that out, eliminate it, and then be able to move forward. And then doors, you'll see doors start opening up for you and opportunities coming and things coming together dots connecting and so you you'll feel motivated to move forward business is not always easy but at the end of the day understand why you're why you're building the business it may be for something personal like building some type of financial um you want to be able to build some um uh, you know, I want to help my kids to be able to build some type of uh, financial uh, status for them in, in the future. So building generational wealth is important to me. And that's my why. Every time I see my son and I'm able to drop him off at, you know, you know, at school and he's able to go to practice and I'm paying for other things for him to do. I love that I'm able to do that. Um, when I see him and he's doing things that I never was able or dreamed of doing and being able to structure him and understanding him coming along with my business and seeing what I do and getting seeing his juices flowing. So know your why. And then if you need to know more about business, don't don't be afraid to reach out to people who are in the same field and ask them some questions. See if you can shadow them. Go out and talk to them. Take some business classes if you need to. There are courses all out there. Use Google to your advantage. Go ahead and try YouTube. YouTube has some great information. Even if you don't, it doesn't give you all every detail, you're able to get the foundation, some tips and tools that kind of help you say, oh, okay, I see how that works. Okay, I know how to connect that. Now. You get something that kind of like helps you. You don't feel like you're as blind when you want to do something. Remember, all of your dreams are valid. Everything in your head, they're valid, and they're worth pursuing and seeing how far it can go. So just get started. I love that. And one thing that really stood out to me that you said, if COVID didn't change you, what will? Like, I know for me personally, I had to, I still have to remind myself, like, you know, if there was nothing else that should, show, that should tell you, like, that you're trying to be limited and do whatever it is that you want to do, COVID was, has been the thing. So um, I thank you so much for coming on and speaking with us. Before we close out, where can if I'm sorry, you cut off. Where can they find me? Uh, where can our viewers find you? Online. Oh, guys, go to my website. I'm at LakitaBrooks.com or TheMotivationalMaven.com. Um, I'm at here. I'm right here on IG, Mrs. Businesswoman. Um, and so if anything, we have some awesome things coming up. I'm excited for a new uh, conference coming up. Um, it's called The Pivot. That's going to be December the 4th, I believe. I don't have any from but the 3rd or the 4th. And so I'm excited about that coming up. I am executive producer. I didn't mention that earlier. Of Unheard Voices with a good friend of mine. It's about some women who are their journeys on how they are um, working with their they have incarcerated sons or they lost their sons to something, some inhumane thing from it could be from a police force from just society so i'm excited about all those things coming up so just stay tuned guys we got some good things coming up and i'd, I'd love to get to be able to help anyone who needs some type of coaching or get you on your journey thank you okay thank well, you thank so much for taking the time out to speak with us and um guys if you missed any of this we, it will be shared on the wall but then we're also going to share it on our youtube as well as on the website so you have plenty of opportunities to go back and be able to watch the replay because she gave away a lot of great knowledge so thank you again for coming on and peace and blessings and you have a great day thank you you as well bye